It is said that this table was once a chopping block, upon which Robert Emmett was beheaded, shortly after being hanged on the 20th of September, 1803, in Thomas Street, Dublin. Following his execution, Irish nationalists remembered and revered Robert Emmett as a hero and martyr, his life and times being celebrated and commemorated in story and in song. This piece of film, from 1919, shows Michael Collins using this table-cum-chopping-block to sell and sign bonds, which it was hoped would help finance the fledgling Irish Republic. By the time this film was shot, the ballad, Bold Robert Emmett, was known in parts of Ireland and England for about 16 years. The ballad was written around 1903 to mark the bicentenary of Robert Emmett's death. And as the following story will illustrate, it was composed by an Irishman who, through no fault of his own, found himself begging on the streets of London. On the evening of the 17th of September, 1907, crowds queued outside Drury Lane Theatre in London to see The Sins of Society, a play by Cecil Raleigh and Henry Hamilton. Before the theatre doors were opened, a 54-year-old blind man entertained the waiting throngs by singing a few songs to his own accompaniment on the concertina. Then, arm in arm with his loving wife, he walked the length of the queue, asking people if they were interested in buying any of the songs, all of which were slotted between the hard covers of an old book. All of the sudden, a stone-faced policeman approached the couple and asked them to move on, at which point the blind man's wife remonstrated with the constable, saying that her husband happened to be in the possession of a peddler's licence, and was therefore perfectly entitled to sell his wares on the street. But Constable E was having none of it, telling the couple that they would be better suited to a life in the gutter. He arrested them both and then hauled them before Sir Albert de Rutzen, magistrate at Bow Street Police Court. Having satisfied himself that the peddler's licence was in fact valid, the arresting officer informed magistrate de Rutzen that the blind man's name was Tom Maguire and that his wife's name was Francis. Flicking through Maguire's book of songs, a clearly impressed de Rutzen asked, Are these your own work? Yes, sir, replied Tom. I composed them all. Some of them I wrote, oh, thirty years ago. I was famous then, sir. The songs included Kathleen Astore, Wait Till the Clouds Roll By, and Oh, Jeremiah, Don't You Go to See, the latter two ditties being highly successful hits for music hall artiste Mary Lloyd. The kiss was dismissed. It may have been just another mundane day at court for de Rutzen, but the story of how a once famous songwriter had fallen into abject poverty made headlines across the world. Just hours after being released from Bow Street, a reporter for the London-based Umpire newspaper conducted an interview with the Maguires at their dilapidated flat in Northampton Street, Clerkenwell. Though born in Ireland, the reporter stated, Tom Maguire was a Manchester man. His accent still betrays him. Although he has lived in London for a quarter of a century, during the course of their long chat, Tom said that he used to have a lucrative job as a sales agent for the silk trade. 
and that he had composed many of his songs while on the road. However, he had to give up his job, he said, when cataracts on his eyes rendered him blind, adding that his plight was further compounded by a flu virus, which severely impaired his hearing. Then came the single most revealing piece of information. While showing the reporter some mementos from his past, Tom disclosed that he had written hundreds of songs, but had dispensed with them in the most unbusinesslike manner. I always sold my work outright, he said, and I have not reaped the royalties. The most I ever received for a song was eight pounds. One of the songs in question was Bold Robert Emmett, the words and music of which he composed and sold for a paltry four pounds. It had already been published in 1905, he said, in Irish Songs for Irish Singers, issued by McLennan's Publishing House in Bouvery Street, London. The umpire included this photograph of Tom Maguire and his wife, which featured as a pen and ink sketch in the Yorkshire Evening Herald. Clearly moved by the entire sorry saga, a theatre manager a Mr. Griffiths bought Tom a brand new concertina and invited him to the stage of the Empire Theatre of Varieties in Hastings to reenact his arrest at Drury Lane and his subsequent court appearance at Bow Street. Though not at all a professional entertainer, Tom Maguire accepted the offer, but his stage act had the effect of making the audience feel slightly uneasy, eliciting a confused response, which could at best be described as sympathetic. Sixteen years later, in June 1923, just a few days after the death of Tom Maguire's wife Frances, a daily news reporter visited the 70-year-old balladeer at his shabby little room in the London borough of Southwark Bridge Road. The reporter remarked that this Irish variety bard had done a good deal for Ireland, the land of his birth, by writing songs descriptive of the state of affairs in that country, but was now living on ten shillings a week, his meagre income generated by groping his way round the West End, playing concertina to theatre cues or selling penny copies of his songs. It's not known what became of Tom Maguire. His name is now largely forgotten, though his ballad about Robert Emmett has been recorded by legions of singers. Its title is invariably bracketed with that catch-all word, trad. Moreover, the melody which accompanied the original words was much more sombre than the Bard of Armagh, Streets of Loretto type melody which is usually used today. And so ends the story of Tom Maguire's Bold Robert Emmett. The struggle is over The boys are defeated Old Ireland surrounded with sadness and gloom. We were defeated and shamefully treated. And I, Robert Emmett, await in my doom. Oh, I was arrested. Cast into prison and tried as a traitor, a rebel, a spy. But no man can call me a knave or a coward, a hero. I lived and a hero. I'll die. Oh,
Robert Emmett, the darling of Erin. Bold Robert Emmett will die with a smile. Farewell, companions, both loyal and daring. I lay down my life for the Emerald Isle. Oh, hark, the bell is tolling. I well know its meaning. My poor heart tells me it is my death knell. And in come the clergy, the warder is leading. I have no friends here to bid me farewell. Goodbye, old Ireland, my parents and sweetheart, companions in arms, to forget you must try. I am proud of the honor, twas only my duty for a hero. I lived and a hero I'll die Old Robert Emmett The darling of Erin Old Robert Emmett Will die with a smile Farewell companions Both loyal My life for the Emerald Isle Hung, drawn and quartered Sure that was my sentence But soon I will show them No coward am I My crime is the love of the land I was born in For a hero I've lived And a hero I'll die A bold Robert Emmett The darling of Erin Old Robert Emmett Will die with a smile Farewell, companions, both loyal and daring. I lay down my life.